Hey, what's going on guys? It's Onion Rings. I'm super excited to be recording this video right now. As you guys have known for a while, I haven't uh, done any Gears of War 4 content for a long time. And I do apologize for that. But the reason was, I was bored. Well, they are finally releasing on June 6th. They're finally releasing a Horde update bringing new maps, content, um, and whatnot. And I'm super excited for it. I would definitely be streaming some Horde. Um, so that's going to be good. Um, if you want to watch the streams, uh, tune into my Mixer, which is my Beam. They just changed the name. Mixer's the same thing, basically. I'll still leave it in the description, as I always have. Uh, but I'm not going to go on too much about that. <clears throat> I'm going to actually read the update for you guys. First, I'll put this link in the, in the description, this whole thing right here. And you can watch this video if you want. I'm not going to watch it because... I don't want to get copyrighted for it, uh, but watch it if you want to. It's really cool. And, um, yeah, we're just going to read it. So, new skills. Um, okay, it, it does look like they put the descriptions down here because I noticed in the video they kind of overlap each other and it's hard to, kind of hard to read them, so it's good that they put them down here. All right, for the engineer, they now have flow, take reduced damage while repairing. Overclock, increase the rate at which weapon lockers replenish ammo, and salvage. Enemies killed by your sentries have a chance of dropping ammo magazines. <clears throat> the heavy is thick skin, take reduced damage from explosions. Berserker, while carrying a heavy weapon, you deal more damage as your health gets lower. And while carrying a heavy weapon, you take less damage as your health gets lower. These two together? Oh my god, I can't even imagine how good these would be. It showed in the video the dude was carrying around a try shot. And with those two mixed together, I can imagine that could be really, really powerful. Uh, the scout is getting new things. Everybody's getting new things. Uh, dodge, take reduced damage while roadie running. That'd be really, really good because you could pair that with the 33% uh, movement speed and the 500% pickup radius and uh, the health boost and all that. And you can roadie run and just pick up everything up, pick everything up while taking reduced damage. That'd be cool. Roadie running will reload your equipped weapon automatically with active reload rounds. That's pretty freaking cool. Being stationary and in cover for a few seconds will cloak you uh, from enemies leaving the cover or shooting will remove the cloak. Shooting enemies from a cloak for a small damage boost, that's pretty cool as well. <coughs> the sniper gets steady hand, take less damage and have reduced camera shake when being attacked while aiming your scope. That's going to be really great because every time I try the sniper out I feel like I'm going for a headshot and then somebody shoots me and I recoil and I miss the shot. So that's going to be amazing to have. Magic bullet critical hits with precision rifles penetrate through enemies and increase the damage of the next shot. Called shot targets you mark take increased damage from all sources, so that's pretty cool. Make sure you're marking your targets. Hang on one second. Oh, from all sources too. That's pretty good. Because I know that the heavy has the marked damage, but that only increases the damage that the heavy does. This will be for everything. That'll mean you could put on that fabricator skill that marks all the enemies. And then your whole team will do more damage to them. That's going to make the sniper a much more viable uh, class, in my opinion. Because right now the sniper is okay, but I don't really think it's good for, you know, a long run. Soldier gets siphoned. Planted grenade kills cause enemies to drop more power. Regenerate one grenade every X seconds. And assault rifles become more accurate the longer they are fired while in cover. Now, in my opinion, <laughs> that one isn't all that great. Especially for the Lancer, it's already pretty accurate. However, I can imagine... Um, for the Enforcer, that could be pretty good, and definitely for the Retro Lancer, that could be pretty good, because the Retro Lancer is hella inaccurate. Uh, boss loot drops and more. Take those new skills out in the field and defeat bosses in Horde matchmaking, matchmaking sorry, for new rewards. Each boss wave you defeat at 30, 40, and 50 will drop a singular random Horde skill. Harder difficulties increase the likelihood of a rare drop. So challenge yourself for the best chance at an awesome drop. Also now a, U, a new UI feature that shows how many power drops and how much they are worth are left on the field. While this benefits the whole team, scouts can now rest safely at the end of the round knowing they have cleaned up every possible power drop out going into the next wave. That's going to be really useful for me because I'm a pretty good scout and I love playing the scout. But sometimes it's hard to find the power if one of your teammates kills an enemy somewhere that you don't see it. So, I mean, this is awesome. Oh, and it looks like they're doing um, a free weekend. Well, it's more than a weekend. June 9th to June 15th. Um, oh, sweet. It's it's not like it's not like the Overwatch one where you only get to play for those days. You can download it from the 9th to 15th, and you have 10 hours to play any time. I think you can even play after the 15th, if I'm reading this right. But you only have 10 hours. 
But you get you get to do the first entire campaign act, full access to Horde and Versus. Nice. You can still play to your 10 hour time limit anytime afterwards. Yeah, so even after the 15th, you can continue to play until you run out of hours. That's pretty cool. Alright, cool, cool. Uh, progression rewards. I guess, is this for Versus? What is this for? I don't know what this is for. Oh, for our new players, we'll be offering special bonuses to earn as you level up, including guaranteed characters. Oh, okay. For new people, when you level up, level 2, level 3, level 4, you, all the way to 6, you get crates. Then 10, you get these. 15, you get the. I got it. Okay, that's cool. I wonder... It says for new players. I wonder if they're going to give them to us people who are already above 30. Probably not. Oh, no way. Come on, man. It keeps getting better. They're doing um, double class XP throughout June. Wait, through the entire month? Wow. 20% bonus XP in the matchmaking. Dude, that's pretty cool. But that, again, might be for the new people. I'm not sure. That'd be cool if it's for everybody, but I'm not positive. Because it does say... Everything you earn in the trial is yours forever. I, I don't know. Um, let me know what you guys think. Do you think the double XP is for everybody? I'm not positive because they put it under this part about the new people. About the new players. I, I imagine they would give it to everybody. I don't know though. Um, anyway, that's great though. If Even if it's for just the new people, that's still pretty good because that'll tempt people to join in and try it out. Because not only will they get 10 hours to play, but they'll be able to level up quicker. That's cool. That's really going to um, track some new people in. Here's what I wanted to know about. Two new difficulties, Inconceivable and Iron Man. <clears throat> with new and improved skills comes tougher challenges. Prepare to take on the toughest fight in Gears of War history with the new Inconceivable difficulty level coming to both Campaign and Horde. In Horde, Inconceivable is a direct step up from Insane. You'll be even weaker and your enemies will be even stronger. Level up your skills to their new level 6 peak and maximize the bonus of your classes if you want to get through all waves of 50 ways of Inconceivable. Unlock Inconceivable difficulty by Horde or four horde by defeating 50 consecutive ways of insane i've already done that a bunch but i guess i'm gonna have to do it again to unlock it in campaign inconceivable takes some more survival based twist giving you less health than insane difficulty but also less health to your enemies that's because surviving on inconceivable is all about effectiveness so weapons and crate drops significantly less ammunition so to make every shot count with whatever pickups you find on the battlefield unlock Inconceivable difficulty for campaign by defeating the campaign on insane. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm probably not going to mess around with the campaign one. In addition, Iron Man mode comes to both Horde and campaign with Rise of the Horde. Iron Man means one simple thing. Don't die. In campaign, one death will restart your game back to square one. What? No. Hell no. Uh-uh. Not happening. Nope, nope, nope. In Horde, no cog tags will be dropped when you die. And one failed wave spells the end of your run to wave 50. What? You can toggle Iron Man on any difficulty that suits you, and there's some achievements out there that, to chase for fans willing to take on the ultimate high-risk challenge. Plus, as an exclusive to Horde, Iron Man adds a 5% XP bonus. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, 5%. What the fuck? That doesn't really seem worth it to me. Maybe I'll try it, you know, just to be ballsy. I mean, if, if you guys want to see it, you know, I guess I'll do it. Holy shit. Uh, 500... Uh, gamer score I'm not gonna read through all these you guys can look at them if you want like I said I'll put this link in the description new maps they're bringing back Avalanche I'm sure you guys remember Avalanche from Gears 2 and Rustlong what's Rustlong is that new no it says it's from Gears of War 3 that's pretty cool wait everyone can play these maps June 13th when they are in public match okay so if you want to play it before it comes to public, you still have to buy it. They're not free maps. I thought they were free. Alright. Crossplay comes to ranked. Oh, boy. Oh, that's going to be pretty interesting. The Return of Wings. What is Wings? Iconic Symbols. Five new wing levels await you once you crest the initial ten re-ups. Ooh, sounds interesting. I'm nowhere near re-up 10, but that sounds cool if I ever get there. 
And I got this already. I got it today. If you guys log in today, you get this. <coughs> well, you get it until June 8th, apparently. So, I mean, you can get it whenever. I got uh, this dude on the right for the UIR, I think. Or did I get the guy on the left? I might have got the guy on the left. Yeah, I got the guy on the left. Um, and then, which one did I get over here? I think I got this dude. But I scrapped him because I don't really do versus mode. Um... So that's pretty cool. Season pass rewards. Um, well, it looks like you season pass holders are getting more stuff. That's pretty cool too. The gear with the golden gun. What's that? Oh my god, it just keeps getting better. Custom built mode arms you with one bullet and hip fire only bald talk. Land your bullet instantly to return it to the gun. Oh, so that's like uh, Call of Duty, one in the chamber. I remember playing that. Dude, that sounds fun. Oh my god. And here's the patch notes. Holy shit. It just keeps getting better. They just keep giving me more. Nasher tuning. That'd be good for people like iDusk who play multiplayer all the time. Balance update. I'm just reading silently. If you guys want to read it, go ahead and pause it. Looks like they're modifying the turrets again. <coughs> Slightly reducing their base damage again. Reduced level 3 and 4 turret damage by 12%. Ooh, that's going to hurt. Increased cost of turrets above level 1. Level 2 base cost is now 20 from 15, 40 from 25 for 3, 80 from 40 for 4. Oh my god. That's the base cost, So If you're upgrading, I'm sure that's still the same. It just means if you build a new turret, you're going to have to spend more. Jesus. Increased cost of ammo refill based on the turret level. Whew. Salvo damage reduced. Oh no, not my salvos. Hammer of Dawn strike power cost increased. Oh my god. They keep increasing that. Stop increasing it. And then here's the notes. Yeah, we knew about the Nasher tuning. This is just basically like... Um, retelling you. Basically. Further improvements to mobile GPUs? Is that what that means? Alright, so you guys can pause if you want to read this. It looks like it's mostly PC stuff, but I think some of it's for consoles, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, this is video is going on long enough. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoy this as much as I do. I'm definitely excited to get started. June 6th, I'll definitely be streaming some Horde, I guess. So stay tuned, guys. I'm definitely pretty freaking excited for this. And uh, hopefully you guys are too. This means I'll be doing more Horde content. I'll probably be redoing some of my old tips and tricks videos as well on my YouTube channel. Um, with these new skills. I mean, there's only three per class. It's not anything super confusing. But it might it might change the way the class builds are. So I'm going to try my best to level all these cards up to max. And make my refresh my videos. And hopefully get some new play styles for you guys so we'll see about that thank you for watching hope you enjoyed be sure to check out my mixer guys that's where i've been doing all my live streaming lately so if you want to watch my live streams make sure you check that out i'll leave the link in the description and like i said i'll leave this link in the description so you guys can come here read what i didn't read and watch the video thank you for watching and i'll see you guys on my next video